At this time, we want to invite to the podium Dr. Honorable Natalia D. Whitley, Minister for Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Agriculture, and Fisheries. Let's give him a welcome. Good afternoon, people of the Virgin Islands. Like I hear I just say, the Virgin Islands. I enjoy that uh, skit by the African Studies Club. I'm a proud member of the African Studies Club, even though they haven't seen me for a while. I adopt the protocol which has already been established, but allow me to recognize the Premier of the Virgin Islands, Honorable Andrew Foy, ministers of government, members of the House of Assembly, Dr. Turnbull and the Heritage Committee, along with our featured speaker, Reverend Dr. Clee, Cleborn Lee Jr. It is my honor and privilege to be here with you this afternoon. We are celebrating 185 years of emancipation from this vicious institution of slavery. Our ancestors were robbed of their humanity as evildoers hunted and captured them like animals. They were traded like ivory or, or leather or some other lifeless commodity. They were branded like cattle, brutalized like nails being pounded by a hammer. They had no labor laws. They were walked to death. A woman could not choose who she would lay with. The man she truly loved had to watch her being mercilessly raped by a plantation owner. Slavery was no joke. Slavery was one of the highest forms of evil the earth has ever witnessed. But slavery also made way for one of the greatest triumphs of humanity in history. Our ancestors despite their limitations, remain the spiritual people. We remain a loving and forgiving people. We held on to our respect for our elders. We maintained our dignity. The slave master could not extinguish the desire for freedom which burned within us. So we prayed, we ran, we resisted, we, had, we inspired kindness through our pleasant nature. We protested, we frustrated, we even bought our own freedom. We would not stop until we were emancipated. Our ancestors paved the way for us to have the quality of life that we have today. Are we so callous? Are we so ungrateful that we cannot say thank you? I can imagine the joy of that fateful morning when we received the news, the shouts of hallelujah, the praises to God. I can imagine the exuberant dancing in the streets, not a celebration inspired by lust or drunkenness, but a dance of thanksgiving and joyfulness. Not only did our ancestors have to overcome slavery, but they had to overcome many obstacles along the path to our present situation. They had to overcome dire economic prospects, a neglectful colonial government. They had to overcome natural disasters, taxation without representation. So the fight continued, but we built our boats and we fished and we sailed and we traded and we cleared our fields and planted our grounds and raised our livestock. All the while we danced our dances, made our clothing, built our houses, raced our boats, played our music, praised our God. We crafted a life for ourselves on this precious rock we call home. The modern BVI of today did not just fall out of the sky. This year, November, will make 70 years since the Great March of 1949. 
at a time when the population was under 7,000 people. 1,500 persons marched to the streets of Rotown, demanding better treatment and demanding better representation. They did not have social media or our modern day transportation, but organized the biggest demonstration in our people's history. As a result of this important historical event, our legislative council was restored, and we were able to elect local leaders who would fight for the interests of our people. You know their names, the Faulkners, the Pens, the Fonsecas, the De Castros, the Stouts, the Malones, the Wheatleys, the Romneys, the O'Neills, the Smiths, the Georges, the Parsons, the Foys, the Flaxes, the Frasers, and all the others who have been elected to do the work of the people. It is through their collective efforts that we have raised the standard of living in the BVI along with the people of the BVI. It is through the struggle and sacrifice of persons like Noah Lloyd and Lindy DeCastro who fought for the preservation of our economic opportunities that we have a BVI with many successful business persons and a commendable level of participation by our local people. But I often ask myself, are we better off today? Are we better off today? Yes, we have big houses and fancy cars, but do we have love in our hearts for our brothers and our sisters? Yes, we have air-conditioned offices and fancy gadgets, but is, is the elderly lonely? Are we healthy and strong as we were in the past? Or are we dying off way before our time? Do we treat each other with respect? Bob Marley had a very popular song with an opening line which stated, emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. The sad reality is that though we are no longer shackled by physical chains, we now experience a form of mental and spiritual bondage. The crime, the laziness, the gossiping, the backbiting, the undermining, the family disputes. I pray that we reflect on the struggles of our ancestors and we can humble ourselves and recognize where we fall short. Let us ask God to renew our spirits. I pray God removes the poison from our hearts. I pray we return to the times when we loved our neighbors as ourselves. Yes, we have departed from the values, the traditions, from the trodden path that our ancestors marched on to their freedom. But it is not too late to return to the path. Let us fight with the same tenacity for the liberation of our minds and spirits. Let us rebuild the BVI with a spirit of love and unity. Let us conduct ourselves in such a way that our Creator would say to us, my good and faithful servant, with whom I am well pleased. Let us conduct ourselves in such a way that our ancestors would be proud. Just like we had the skit and they were wondering how we were doing. They would not say we struggled in vain. With those words, I say happy emancipation and let us continue our march towards freedom. And before I finish, let me recognize the efforts of Dr. Turnbull and the Heritage Committee, who for many years have been bringing to attention the people of the Virgin Islands, the true reason for these celebrations. Give them a round of applause. Without events such as these, our Emancipation Festival would be far from where it needs to be. And I would like for us to continue to walk towards making our Emancipation Festival more about emancipation, more about the culture and the history, so that instead of two tents here, next time we have four and five and six tents, filled with persons grateful, grateful for the struggles of our ancestors who allowed for us to have the opportunities we have here today. 
So I thank you for your kind attention. And I'm looking forward to a, a very successful emancion, emancipation celebration, the few days that we have remaining. Thank you. <laughs>